help she travel. And knowing women who made a difference. A Cooler Kids gift to our community. Welcome to a personal interview with Shirley Holman conducted on Thursday, April 27th by Emily. Part 1. Well, do you want to know how I started out sure. in politics or how I started? I just, um, I was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and went to school at Downer, which is now part of Lawrence campus. I got married and moved to Louisiana, and in Louisiana, my husband was in the Air Force. When I was in Milwaukee, I worked for the Milwaukee Journal in advertising. I worked for the paper in Shreveport, Louisiana in advertising. And then I, when he went back to school, I worked at the paper in Lafayette, Indiana. He went to Purdue University. And um, I worked for the Purdue paper. I was their only paid person on the paper. The rest were all students. <laughs> Then we moved up here. And uh, I started doing a lot of volunteer work at the nursing homes. And then when they formed in the, s the 60s, the state and the federal government formed what they call the Commission on Aging. And we um, had we're going to have a commission here in La Crosse County. So I applied and I was appointed. And then I realized that going to county boards, there was a lot of men, but no women, <laughs> and uh, felt that I would get more attention if I was on the board. So I ran for public office and was elected in 1978 for the first time. New Citizens, that was my main goal when I first got on the board, um, worked very hard to start the minibus program, which is still going, worked very hard to do um, Meals for Seniors, which is a program that is still going, and in 1981, I and another lady formed um, a kind of little corporation and we started Gifted Hands, which is a senior craft store on the north side and that is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. So I'm very proud of that. <laughs> I've also done a lot of work in solid waste and uh, when I would go to groups I would always overwhelm the men with knowledge of solid waste. <laughs> And most of them didn't know what a leachate collection system was. And I, I, you know, I educated a lot of people that way, and I really did enjoy that. Minibus is a program for senior citizens that they can call in the day before and can get bus service for uh, medic. Medical is the first priority. The second priority is working and there are seniors that are working and then it would be um, anything else after that but medical is the first priority and they can ride the bus and it's a nominal fee and the bus picks them up at their door and then takes them to where they're going and then we'll pick them up when they're through and those are all things that are handmade by the seniors and I think we have about six or seven hundred people that bring things in. And at the shop, they sign up to be a participant, and that's a fee. And then when they want to sell their product, they put a price on it, and then we put a price 20% more, and then that's how it's sold. So they get whatever price they want. Was your inspiration that get into politics? The fact that when I was going down and asking for things at the nursing homes, I just felt I could get better attention if I was on the county board. And I've learned a lot more, you know. <laughs> the 
through through the years, the counties have a convention at each. They had different spots in the state, and whenever they had the the convention here, I served as chair on that committee, and that that was really interesting, and that got me involved in the counties association, which is called WCA, Wisconsin Counties Association, and it is a lobby and information group for all 72 counties in La Crosse, in Wisconsin. And I started serving on committees there. And then um, I was elected vice chairman and then went up through and finally became president of the association. And, and that was a very, very interesting time. Because when I was president of the association, I went to Germany on a trade mission with the governor, in, and it was a trade and tourist mission. Um, went all over the United States to different meetings. Spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. And I got to meet a lot of wonderful people that are really concerned about our government. Before you also said about solid waste, what is that too? Solid waste is the landfill. That we refer to that as solid waste. And we landfill things that we don't want anymore. But we also, uh, in the 80s, we started an RDF plant, Refuge Derived Fuel, and that's on French Island and that burns some of our garbage, not all of it, and we still have to bury a lot of it. And we have the landfill is off of Highway 16, and through the years working with solid waste, and I was going to show you all the, the things, uh, we have started various programs, and I wish I had kept that one sheet that said which, we, which programs we started, but we um, are doing something now very different, but through the 90s, worked very hard to get a household hazardous waste program. That would be waste that you aren't supposed to be dumping down the drain, waste that you shouldn't be dumping in, in the soil, and worked very hard on that. We had two committees that worked very hard, and in the early 2000s, about 2001, NSP, or Excel as it's now called, was going to be uh, fined for something that they hadn't done with one of their plants. And so they asked that that fine be directed here. And so with having that money, which was over 700000 we were able to build a facility here of household, for household hazardous waste. We have a mobile unit that goes out into the area. We also have something here that people always say you need to work together to get something accomplished. Well, we have a, a solid waste service area, and that service area encompasses nine different communities. We have two counties in Minnesota and communities, Buff we have the county of Buffalo, we have parts of Trampolo, we have parts of Jackson. And so it's, it's really all these people working together for the same goal. And, and just recently, and I almost wish I hadn't decided to retire, <laughs> uh, we, we do have the Household Hazardous Waste Program going, and that was a real big goal of mine. We also have uh, something that's very new, M mining a landfill. The first landfill that we had was, as they called, built state of the art, but it did leak. And do you know what leachate is? A leachate is water or the juices that run through the garbage, and you want to be careful that they don't get in the water, the wa water stream, so you line the cells of the landfill very carefully. Well, we thought ours was 
done very well. It wasn't. We now have what they call a leachate collection system in the new landfill. We have one landfill sitting here and the other one is next to it. And in that landfill we have a collection system which is pipes running underneath um, with all the clay lining and you have a, a membrane and then you have these piping systems and it pipes all these fluids into the sewer system. So we are now in the process of mining the old landfill, taking the garbage out of the old landfill and putting in cells in the new landfill. Do you have like friends or family who have been there for you all along your way, supporting you? Yes, very much so. Can you name some of My husband has been a really good supporter. My children have. Uh, they always have helped me when I run for re-election because when you do run for re-election, the best way to get yourself known and the best way to uh, get your information out is go door to door. And I remember early on when I first got on the county board, when they call people for jury duty, they take different districts and they called um, some people from my district and they couldn't give them the district number but they knew who their supervisor was so that always made me feel better. I read that you were in District 34. What yes. does that mean? The county is just, there are 35 supervisors on the county board. Each one has a district that they represent and every 10 years when there's a census. They redivide what your district is so that there's one thing called one man, one vote. They want to have the equal amount of people in each district. My district encompasses where the landfill is because I live out there. Um, it used to be the mall. It's not anymore, but where Target, is, not tar yeah, Target is and. Um, Home Depot and Walmart all around the country club and I have some some areas in I have areas in city of Onalaska, town of Madari and town of Hamilton. We have ha townships as well as cities in the area. Somewhere I read something about the aging and long-term committee. Yes. What exactly is that? Aging and Long-Term Care is the committee that works with the nursing homes. That's the board of directors for the nursing homes, for the Commission on Aging, and for the Veterans Association. And we govern what happens at those facilities. On the county board, like, you were the vice chairman since 1984, I believe? Mm -hmm. Um, what does the vice chairwoman do? When, uh, since I was the first vice chair, if the chairman could not be there, then I would conduct the meetings, the regular county board meetings, and I would sit in with him and the other vice chair, and we would figure out committee assignments, and we would um, serve if someone in office passed away or resigned, then we would pick out someone else to. It, it's basically being there when the chairman needed help. <laughs> Have you done any like traveling for? I, I've done a lot of traveling. As I said, when I was <coughs> on the counties association, I went to Germany twice, and I went to um, Washington D.C. about four times, went in, went out uh, west, went in, went, toured a lot of the state, and it was always very, very interesting. In fact, I'm I'm chairman of the board of directors for ORC Industries, which was the I I don't know if you saw that picture. I was showing the picture when we. Um, 
did the groundbreaking. We ha we have three plants in Wisconsin. One here. I should say we have more. We have a complex here of four plants, but we also have one in Arcadia, and we have another plant in Westby. We also have four plants down in Brownsville, Texas, and when we did the groundbreaking down there. In fact, I just got back from Brownsville. I was down there last week. We have a wellness center at each facility, and so we had the groundbreaking, the opening, open house for the wellness center down in Brownsville. But we employ employ eighty percent of our employees are either physically or mentally disabled, and. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization, and we make a lot of things for the government. A lot of military things. In fact, I even went to Paris, France, to a military trade show. That was the first time we ever were invited to one, and went to that with ORC Industries. And we even had a reception at the embassy in France. So that was really interesting. <laughs> Do you enjoy meeting like, all the new people? I'm sure you're proud of Yes, yes, I really do. And I've met a lot of neat people. And I, when I retired and said goodbye, I said there were a lot of people that I remember on the board that were very dear people. And I will always remember them and hold them in my heart because we, I made a lot of good, a lot of good friends. I still, you know, there's still good friends, but there are also some that are no longer with us. So you try to remember those. I'm also on the uh, board of advisors at Viterbo, and that's really interesting too. <laughs> so I keep really busy, and I still do a lot of volunteer work. But I'm, try I'm trying to think um, some of the things I served on almost every committee on the county board with the exception of highway I never was on highway because that was elected and that was a position that they really didn't readily put women on <laughs> it's still hard sometimes <laughs> people always ask was it hard being because I was the fourth woman on the board and I I said yes sometimes it was because you had to make sure you knew what you were talking about they accepted you when they found out that you were being very practical and very forthcoming with information. I did get an award from um, the YWCA, and it was the Woman in Government Award, which was in 19, what did I put down, 1989. And there were a lot of different awards there that I gave them. That I didn't bring all of them even. <laughs> No, I just think I, I've been very lucky. I've enjoyed all of the years that I've spent. But we do get paid, and it's very nominal what we get paid. And I always say it's the best volunteer job you can have. And I've always teased that um, I make about a nickel an hour. <laughs> and when it, people have asked, why have you stayed on the you know, board as long as I did? And I said, well, I like the mental stimulation and the verbal combat. <laughs> and I, I think I, it's in one of those articles that I wrote. <laughs> this podcast brought to you from La Crosse, Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.